Uh, let's just bring you some breaking news. Uh, this is in relation to the assassination attempt on former president and current uh, presidential candidate Donald Trump. Uh, the attempt on his life last month at a campaign rally, the shooting leaving one audience member dead and two injured. We're just getting some news from the FBI about the suspected shooter in that assassination attempt. Uh, the FBI announcing uh, that the suspect conducted more than 60 online searches related to Biden Trump in the 30 days uh, before the attack, uh, also revealing that the shooter searched for Democratic and Republican convention dates. Uh, this is obviously the uh, suspect's uh, online history. Um, FBI officials also saying that surveillance video showed the suspected um, uh, showed the suspected shooter on the roof for about six minutes before opening fire. Uh, also saying that the suspect sought to target major events and became hyper focused on that Pennsylvania rally involving Donald Trump, uh, and that the suspect showed a mix of ideologies and didn't appear to be right-leaning or left-leaning. So that's the FBI tonight uh, updating us on their investigation into the man accused of carrying out that assassination attempt against Donald Trump. The FBI saying nearly a 1,000 interviews have been conducted uh, in this uh, attempt to establish the suspect's motive, but it remains unclear. Let's bring in our US correspondent, Mark Stone, who's following events for us from Washington tonight. So quite a bit of detail coming out this evening from the FBI, Mark. Yes, but very few answers. Uh, still a mystery uh, as to why Thomas Crooks uh, decided to try to assassinate uh, former President uh, Donald Trump. Uh, as you say, uh, the FBI has been uh, briefing reporters in the last uh, few minutes and they've said that they've conducted uh, nearly a thousand uh, interviews. Uh, they say uh, that the man who tried to assassinate Donald Trump had searched online multiple times. Remember, they had accessed his phone quite quickly after he was shot dead on that roof uh, in Butler, Pennsylvania, uh, quite a few weeks ago. Now, they accessed his phone. They had difficulty initially uh, in getting information off that phone. But clearly, um, at their base at Quantico uh, in Virginia, they've been working on that for some time. And they've they've gleaned a bit more, um, but not enough, I think, to, to answer questions. They, they've uh, established that he had been looking uh, since 2019 uh, at both um, Donald Trump but also at President Biden. So no suggestion of any ideology either one way uh, or the other. Um, so I suppose that the, the upsum is that they are no closer to understanding why uh, he decided to try to assassinate former President Trump. Uh, it suggests that there is no particular ideology. Uh, I, I think the focus uh, the, the conclusions will be will be moving towards the idea that he was a lone wolf uh, actor, uh, that he um, chose Donald Trump through no, for no particular uh, reason. Um, but I think it's also true to say that in the absence of fact, conspiracy theory rages. Uh, and it is it is true that um, that across America, and I, I've heard it plenty of times on my travels, there are people who, who wonder uh, if there is something be being hidden here. There is. To be, to be straight, absolutely no evidence of anything uh, being um, covered up in any way at all. But with the absence of fact, and the FBI at the moment has been unable to establish any clear motive, um, then, of course, in a country like America, conspiracies rage. And Mark, how does this feed into the campaign? You talk about conspiracy theories. This investigation is still ongoing. As you said, so few answers at the moment. How long will this investigation take, do you think, as this campaign continues on? We have 69 days to go now until America decides. Well, I think within, within a portion of of the um, of the Trump base, uh, they will they frankly feed on, on many conspiracy theories, which. Um, uh, you know, e evidence doesn't point to to any theory, any of these theories being accurate, but they will they will nevertheless feed on that. More broadly, I think 
what Donald Trump's um, brush with death uh, did initially uh, was to boost his campaign. Uh, he went from that extraordinary moment into his party convention where he was uh, officially crowned the uh, the the Republican Party uh, candidate. Uh, but since then, a lot has changed. I mean, I, I remember being at that convention at the end of it. It almost felt as if the Republicans had won uh, already. That, that, that moment with the assassination attempt carried him through the convention uh, as some sort of god as far as uh, his own side were concerned. But since then, of course, Joe Biden dropped out of the race, replaced by Kamala Harris. And if you look at the polls, well, they've been upended. Uh, Donald Trump was ahead in the polls when, when, when Joe Biden was the, was the candidate. Now Kamala Harris is the head, only, is ahead, only just, I should say. Uh, it is, most polls are still within the margin of error. But what Kamala Harris has done uh, is opened up more paths to victory, more paths for her to get to the White House uh, in the November uh, election. And I think, uh, we, I think we've got some live pictures of her um, arriving uh, in Georgia uh, today. Georgia, of course, a key state that both uh, sides uh, need to win. Uh, these are um, her leaving Washington a few, a few moments ago on. A, a few an hour or so ago, um, heading uh, on uh, Air Force Two down to Savannah in Georgia, uh, where uh, she and Tim Walls, her running mate, uh, are going to conduct a two-day bus tour of this key state. I was in Georgia a couple of weeks ago. We crisscrossed the state ourselves. We we got a sense really of of how critical a state it is, and how because Harris is now the candidate and not Biden. Uh, she's put this state back in play for the Democrats. And so, like many others across the Sun Belt, but across the Rust Belt as well in the north of the country, um, these are states that both sides need to win. So Kamala Harris and Tim Walls will be in um, uh, uh, Georgia through the course of the next two days. And on Thursday night, the two of them will sit down for the first interview that they have given since they became the candidates for the Democrat side. Uh, they'll sit down with CNN for an interview. And, and I think that will be absolutely key, because if there is... Well, there were quite a few criticisms of, of the Harris campaign, certainly from the right of the spectrum here in America. And the key criticism is who is she? What does she stand for? What are her policies? Why does she appear to be flip-flopping on many issues, whether it be fracking, whether it be the border, uh, whether it be the economy, uh, other things too? The, this is scrutiny that she has not yet faced, and she will face that scrutiny uh, in, in her first interview alongside Tim Walls uh, on Thursday. And I should say, it, it, Georgia is a key state. You can, you can scan that QR code there uh, to get a sense of what we found in Georgia just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a couple of key moments coming up in this uh, race for the White House, that TV debate. Kamala Harris wants that. She said that she wants to debate Donald Trump. The TV interview, she's not as comfortable. They could be a couple of key moments in this uh, race uh, for the big job. Um, it's worth reiterating the breaking news, Mark, because we're just looking at the news lines that are coming out from the FBI tonight, that press briefing about the suspect in the Donald Trump assassination. Uh, the motive remains unclear. It's worth reminding people just tuning in uh, what's been revealed by the FBI tonight, Mark. Yes, I mean, they say that they still have no definitive motive um, uh, for the uh, shooter. Uh, Thomas Crooks uh, is was his name. He, of course, was shot dead on that roof uh, by Secret Service. Um, snipers who were positioned uh, in the areas around that picture that you're looking at there. Uh, much criticism of the Secret Service for not having um, spotted that that roof was a weakness, that that roof was a place where a gunman could have a clear shot as he did uh, of Donald Trump. So a huge amount of criticism of why the Secret Service uh, did not sweep that roof. Um, but they still have no um, definitive motive. No evidence, they say, of a co-conspirator. Thomas Crooks acted alone. No evidence of foreign involvement and no definitive ideology for the shooter, either left or right-leaning. So still a mystery, still an ongoing investigation.